Hi friends, it's Miss Emily again, the speech teacher here at Hillcrest Elementary School. I'm going to be reading chapter 15 of Mr. Popper's Penguins. You ready? Let's go. Popper's Performing Penguins. At that moment, they were interrupted by the manager who came in with a groan. What's the matter? asked Mr. Greenbaum. The marvelous Marcos who closed the program haven't turned up and the audience are demanding their money back. What are you going to do? asked Mr. Greenbaum. Give it to them, I suppose. And here it is Saturday night, the biggest night of the week. I hate to think of losing all that money. I have an idea, said Mr. Popper. Maybe you won't have to lose it. As long as it's the end of the program, why don't we just have the penguins rehearse in there on a real stage? We ha we'd have more room, and I think the audience would enjoy it. All right, said the manager. Let's try it. So the penguins had their first rehearsal on a real stage. The manager stepped out on the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, he said, raising his hand, with your kind indulgence, we are going to try out a little novelty number tonight. Owing to unforeseen circumstances, the marvelous Marcos are unable to appear. We are going to let you see a rehearsal of the Poppers performing penguins instead. I thank you. In a dignified way, the Poppers and the penguins walked out on the stage and Mrs. Popper sat down at the piano. Aren't you going to take off your gloves to play? Asked the manager. Oh no, said Mrs. Popper. I'm so used to playing with them that I'll keep them on if you don't mind. Then she started Schubert's military march. The penguins began to drill very nicely, wheeling and changing their formations with great precision until Mrs. Popper stopped playing in the middle of the piece. The audience clapped vigorously. There's more to it, said Mrs. Popper, half to the manager and half to the audience, where they form in a hollow square and march in that formation. It's so late, we'll skip that part tonight. We'll jump to the second part. You're sure you don't want to take your gloves off, madam? Asked the manager. Mrs. Popper, smiling, shook her head and began the Merry Widow Waltz. Ten of the penguins now formed in a semicircle as Nelson and Columbus in their midst put on a wild sparring contest. Their round black heads leaned far back so they could watch each other with bulls, round white eyes. Cork, said Nelson, punching Columbus in the stomach with his right flipper and then trying to push him over with his left flipper. Gah, said Columbus. Look at those funny penguins. Gah, said Columbus, going into a clinch and hanging his head over Nelson's shoulder as he tried to punch him in the back. Hey, no fair, said the manager. Columbus and Nelson broke loose as the other ten penguins looked on, applauding with their flippers. Columbus now sparred politely with Nelson until Nelson hit him on the eye, whereupon Columbus retreated with a loud orc. The other penguins began to clap and the audience joined them. As Mrs. Popper finished the waltz, both Nelson and Columbus stopped fighting, put down their flippers, and stood still, facing each other. Which bird won? Who's ahead? shouted the audience. Gook! said all the ten penguins in a semicircle. This must have meant look, for Nelson turned to look at them, and Columbus immediately punched him in the stomach with one flipper and knocked him down with the other. Nelson lay there with his eyes closed. Columbus then counted ten over, then counted ten over the prostate Nelson, and again the ten other penguins applauded. That's part of the act, said Jamie. The other penguins all like Columbus to win. And so they all said, Gook! at the end. That always made Nelson look away so Columbus can sock him good. Nelson now rose to his feet and all the penguins formed in a row and bowed to the manager. Thank you, said the manager, bowing back. Now comes part three, said Mrs. Popper. 
oh, sorry, now comes part three, said Mr. Popper. Oh, Papa, said Mrs. Popper, you forgot to bring the two painting step ladders and the board. That's all right, said the manager. I'll get the stage hands to bring some. And no time at all, a pair of ladders and a board were brought in. And Mr. Popper and the children showed them how the ladder had to be set up with the board resting on top. See that picture? The board resting on top of the ladders? With the board set up, resting on top. Then Mrs. Popper began playing the pretty descriptive piece by the brook. At this point in the act, the penguins always forgot their discipline and got dreadfully excited. They would all begin shoving at once to see which could be the first to climb the ladders. However, the children always told Mr. Popper that the act was all the funnier for all this pushing and scrambling, and Mr. Popper supposed it was. So now, with a great deal of squawking, the penguins fought and climbed the ladders and ran across the board in complete confusion, often knocking each other off entirely to the floor below, then hurrying to toboggan down the other ladder and knock off any other penguins who were trying to climb up from there. This part of the act was very wild and noisy, in spite of Mrs. Popper's delicate music. The manager and the audience were all holding their sides, laughing. At last, Mrs. Popper got to the end of the music and took off her gloves. You'll have to get those ladders off the stage or I'll never get these birds under control, said Mr. Popper. The curtain is supposed to fall at this point. So the manager gave the signal for the curtain to go down and the audience stood up and cheered. When the ladders had been taken away, the manager had 12 ice cream cones brought in for the penguin. Then Janie and Bill began to cry. So the manager ordered several more and everybody had one. Mr. Greenbaum was the first to congratulate the poppers. I don't mind telling you, Mr. Popper, that I think you've got some absolute unique You've got something absolutely unique in those birds. Your act is sensational. And the way you helped out my friend, the manager here, shows that you're real troopers, the kind that we need in show business. I'd like to predict that your penguins will soon be packing the biggest theaters from Oregon to Maine. And now to come to terms, Mr. Popper, he continued, how about a 10 week contract at $5,000 a week? Is that all right, Mama? asked Mr. Popper. Yes, that's very satisfactory, answered Mrs. Popper. Well then, said Mr. Greenbaum, just sign these papers and be ready to open next Thursday in Seattle. And thanks again, said the manager. Would you mind putting on your gloves again for a minute, Mrs. Popper? I'd like you to start playing the military march again and let the penguins parade for a minute. I want to get my ushers in here to look at those birds. It would be a lesson for them. Thanks, Huskies. Can't wait to hear about Chapter 16 next time. Have a great day.